Another nasty winter, not just in the United States, but in Europe and parts of Asia as well. It was the worst November in Norway and Sweden in 100 years. In England, it was the coldest December in recorded weather history, the worst winter in Moscow in a century. Here in Copenhagen at the Danish Space Institute, scientists are studying the correlation between sunspot activity and the really bad winters we've been having. Dr. Jens Petersen at the Danish Space Institute says it's too early to know whether the last few harsh winters are the beginning of a prolonged cooling period. The sun is behaving in a, in a very unusual way. We've just been through a solar minimum, which has been unusually long. It, it seems as if we have to go back 200 years to find such a long solar minimum. The Danish Space Institute is a proponent of the theory that low sunspot activity allows more cosmic rays to reach Earth, leading to more clouds and colder temperatures. If the sun starts to become more passive or less active, then we will have more cosmic rays and we will have more clouds and we will have a colder climate on Earth. In 2009, almost 300 days without a sunspot, 51 days without a sunspot last year. This year's sunspot activity has not only picked up, but has included some large solar flares. Does that mean warm weather is ahead? Peterson says it's too soon to know, but it may just be a blip during a longer-term solar minimum. Dr. Don Easterbrook, professor emeritus of geology at Western Washington University, says we remain in a cold period. That's right. The, the good news is that global warming is over at least for the next few decades. The bad news is global cooling is on the way. It actually is arriving now. Bad news because for all the talk about how warming was going to threaten life on the planet, cooling is actually much worse. Cold climates kill twice as many people as warm climates. Cold extremes, uh, the death rate is twice what it is for um, warm extremes. There is decreased food production, which is already occurring. An expert at the Niels Bohr Institute says the greatest climate challenge mankind has faced has been surviving ice ages. While many scientists say there were several ice ages, leading creationists say there was just one after the flood. But they both agree that the most recent one ending many thousands of years ago was a doozy. A towering ice sheet spread south over northern Europe, most of Canada and the northern U.S. Chicago was buried under a mile of ice. It was an event so colossal that when it melted, it left behind natural wonders like the Great Lakes and the Niagara Falls. If it were to happen in today's world, the most populated cities in the northern U.S. and Europe would become all but uninhabitable, creating economic chaos and food shortages. It would be a disaster on a monumental scale. But there's little mainstream scientific concern about global cooling. 2010 was declared one of the warmest years on record, although the whole business of temperature reporting has become politicized because of global warming. There is, of course, a, a totally different agenda for the people who are pushing global warming. That's all about money, about making hundreds of billions of dollars for certain individuals who are pushing the whole thing. This week, the EU released a plan that would ban cars from European cities as a way to fight global warming. The belief in global warming is a belief that man can somehow predict future climate. But the sudden and catastrophic Japanese earthquake was a grim reminder that man remains at the mercy of nature's unpredictable and sudden extremes. This is not likely to happen in our lifetime, but scientists say the climate is perhaps the most unpredictable part of nature. Dale Hurd, CBN News, Copenhagen.